In this video, what I want to do is talk to you about some of the most common mistakes that students make with rational expressions. And the first mistake that I see time and time again with students is using the division property incorrectly. Now, students, we all know that one divided by one is equal to one. X divided by X is going to equal to one, right? That's the first mistake. Um, X plus one divided by X plus one is going to be equal to one. This is called the division property. Anytime you have a number, a variable or expression divided by itself, that is going to equal to one. Sometimes we say it's divided out, but in reality, it just divides to one. And then typically it's going to equal to one when you do it properly. And what that, what I mean by that is it has to be, ha it, it's only going to like work if it, if you have your terms separated by multiplication. So for example, if I have this expression X squared minus a four X plus three divided by a X squared minus two X minus three. One thing that happens to students all the time is they say, oh, I have an X squared in the numerator and denominator, divide them out. Or I have a three and a negative three, divide them out. And no, like they don't just divide out or cancel out, right? Because if you're following this logic anyways, these would divide to be equal to what? A one, right? So again, there's still that one there. So the main thing that you need to understand here is don't divide out terms when they're separated by addition or subtraction. What you need to do is factor. Why? Because factoring rewrites our expression by multiplication. So watch what happens here. When I go ahead and factor my numerator and denominator, what two numbers multiply to give you three, add to give you negative four, that's gonna be an X minus three times an X minus one. And then over here, I'm gonna get a X minus three and or what two numbers multiply to give me negative three, add to give me a negative two. That's gonna be a X minus three times an X, um, X plus one, right? Okay, now you can see how these terms are exactly the same. So guess what? They divide out to one. Now what happens though is now my terms are separated by multiplication. So what is one times anything, right? One times a is just equal to a. One times x minus one is just equal to x minus one. So these expressions are preserved, okay? That's why we have to have things written as uh, multiplication because multiplying by one is just gonna keep things the same. But if you were to add or subtract that one, you couldn't get rid of it. Like that one would have to still be there, right? And that's why that's wrong. So anyways, um, so in this case, what's going to happen? So let me just kind of do a does not equal, you know, you can't like divide, I'll just leave that off. Um, so anyways, my point though, is these look very similar. These are not exactly the same though. See how the X and the ones, like this is not the exact same expression, X minus one, X plus one. So you have to do the expressions that are grouped together. So in this case, the final answer here is going to be an X minus one divided by a X plus one. Okay. So it's very, very important that you are applying the division property correctly. And again, the way to apply the division property correctly is again to factor, to rewrite your expression as a product. Once you have terms separated by multiplication, then you can go ahead and divide out your terms um, using the division property. All right, so number, so division property, I'm actually gonna write this out this. Okay, now the next mistake that I see students make is comes up with discontinuities. Okay. And it's really just students not under, not understanding um, discontinuities properly, mainly kind of like when a function is not going to be, um, when there's going to be, when the function is not going to be properly defined, as well as like when we're looking at like holes, as well as um, we're looking at like holes and um, vertical asymptotes. Okay. So the main thing we need to understand with rational expressions is remember, you cannot divide by zero. Like if I have one over X, right? X cannot equal zero, right? You cannot divide by zero. Now let's say you could divide by zero then one over a would equal some answer B, right? Well, this is kind of makes a little bit of sense because then a times B is equal to one, right? And every time you have a division problem, right? You can always rewrite that as a multiplication problem, right? You know, six divided by two equals three, two times three equals six, right? You can just kind of go back and forth here. So if I say one over zero is equal to some number, let's say B, well, then that means B times zero is back equal to one. And that doesn't really make too much sense because we know anything times zero is equal to zero, right? So that is not going to work. So the reason why this is important is when we're dealing with our discontinuities, like if I have a, let's say an equation here, y is equal to one over x plus two, what I need you to understand here is x cannot equal a negative two. That is going to be a value that is not in your domain, right? So any values that make your denominator equal to zero are not going to be in your domain. So we could say our domain here, it's going to be all real numbers such that X cannot equal a negative two, because that is going to be the value that makes my denominator equal to zero. However, what about if we have multiple values that make our denominator equal to zero? And what about when we simplify them, they get divided out, 
right? What does that what does that do for our discontinuities or what does that do for our domain? So let's go and take a look at another example. What if I had y equals two times x, um, two x plus two divided by a two x squared plus 12 x plus a 10, All right? Now, again, just like we did here, do not divide out the twos. Don't do that, right? These are not, things are not separated by uh, multiplication, right? You have all these different terms are separate out. You can't divide those out, okay? So we need to go ahead and f -f 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 -f. we need to factor, okay? So when we go ahead and factor, I'm going to multiply or factor out the two. It's going to be leaving with an x plus one. Over here, I'm going to have to factor out a two again. Um, let's actually factor the two out down below. So I get an x squared plus a six x plus five. Okay. What two numbers multiply to give me a five, add to give me a six. That's going to be five and one. So therefore I have a two times a x plus five times an x plus one. All right, do you see now how things are separated by multiplication? This is good. Now I can apply the division property. Whoop, those get divided out. Whoop, those get divided out. So when everything gets divided out, remember what does it divide out to? A one, right? You can always write something times a multiply times a one. So I still have a one in my numerator, but my denominator, I just have an x plus five. Okay, so hopefully you recognize that the domain is gonna be all real numbers except for negative five. But what about to this x plus one and this two that got divided out? So here's what that mistake that students make is they only go back, they only focus on the domain of the simplified answer. That's not true, guys. You got to go, you also have to include the whole that you divided out, right? Because the x plus five didn't get factored out, right? Didn't get divided out. So that is what we call a non removable discontinuity. In a graph, that is going to produce what we call a vertical asymptote. The x plus one did get divided out. That's why we call it a removable discontinuity. And on a graph, that is going to be a whole of the graph. Now this two got divided out, but again, does two make your denominator equal to zero? No, like plug two in for x and you can see it does not make your denominator zero. So two is just a scalar of the graph, okay? It's actually, um, it's not a discontinuity. It's not a, a value that is not a part of our domain. So in this case, what we need to do though is we need to understand that we need to set my denominator or set everything equal to zero. I prefer to use the factor form, right? And what I want you to do is set it equal to zero, right? Because when you want to find the domain, you want to find all the values that make your denominator equal to zero. And again, notice how the two just gets divided out, right? So I have a, you know, x plus five times an x plus one is equal to zero and use a zero product property, right? Set them equal to zero. And you could say x is equal to a negative five and x equal to a negative one. Now, in terms of the domain goes, these values are not in your domain. So your domain is going to be all real numbers such that x cannot equal a negative one and a negative five, right? These are the values that are not in your domain, but there's a difference between them. And this is what comes into the discontinuities. There is a big difference, a big difference, an important difference. And the difference is negative five is the discontinuity from here, right? That never got removed. That is a vertical asymptote, okay? Because if it's not removable, it's stayed in the simplified answer, that's not removable. This negative one comes from this one, which got removed. That got simplified. That is a whole. So sometimes if your teacher asks you like, hey, is it a vertical asymptote or if it's a whole? Now you know how to distinguish between the two. A lot of students will get that mistake wrong. So again, make sure you're knowing the difference of your discontinuities. But that's not it with understanding discontinuities. Okay. The other thing that happens with a lot of students is they say, all right, set the denominator equal to zero. Like I got that. But then things kind of get a little bit weird when we start dealing with complex fractions. So what if I had an example over here? plus a one over five. And I said, all right, find all the values that the function is not defined for. You say, okay, well, that's going to be all the values that make my denominator equal to zero, right? Let's actually use a different color here. So in this case, you say, all right, well, I have a denominator here. I have a denominator here and five is a denominator, but that doesn't really count because five equals zero does not work. But the mistake that students make is this one. Guys, this is a denominator as well. Right? So we also have to calculate when that is not going to equal zero. So x plus three equals zero. X minus two equals zero. Don't set the five equal to zero. I'm sorry, five equals zero. Don't set that equal to zero. That doesn't make any sense, right? It's like, whatever. <laughs> so x minus three, subtract three, plus two, plus two. So yeah, x equals negative three is not in the domain or is not defined. X equals a positive two. Why do I write a positive two? Um, x equals a positive two is not in the domain. This does not really matter. But what is my other value? My other value that's not in the domain is I have one minus a x minus two plus a one over a five equal to zero. 
So now I got to go ahead and solve this. So what are you going to do? Well, let's subtract the one fifth to the other side. That's going to be give me a one over X minus two is equal to a negative one over five. Okay. Now what I need to do is, did I delete? Okay, I did. Um, now what I'm going to do is apply the cross product or you can multiply by the you know common denominator on both sides. But if you apply the cross product, you're going to get a five equals a negative one times a X minus two. Make sure you include that negative one here, right? And basically what I did here, guys, I just did the cross product. And again, this negative could go to the negative one or go to negative five. It doesn't really matter. Pick one, okay? Um, I'm going to choose for it to go to this one. And just because I want to highlight that you have to make sure you apply distributed property. It's so important to do that. If you don't want to make the mistake with distributed property, you probably would want the negative to go down there. But again, it doesn't matter. Your answer is still going to be the same, guys. This is going to be negative X, let's say plus two plus two, and then I'll subtract the two on both sides. So I get a three is equal to a negative X. Divide by negative one, divide by negative one. X is equal to a negative three. So guess what, guys? When I'm talking about my domain here, my domain is going to be all real numbers such that X cannot equal. Oh, I thought I changed this answer. Oh, I did. Did I forget to change this? I forgot to change that. Um, X cannot equal negative three. Well, we already have negative three, not in the answer, right? So, you know, I'm just going to change this. Let's just change this to a four just because I want this answer to be like different. Um, let me change it like in blue. Cause I don't, I, they, I don't want you to feel like this was a picked solution. Um, cause it wasn't. So I'm just going to change the answer again. So let's say, um, let's do that. Let's do it in light. Let's pretend this is a four. You do the same thing. X plus four equals zero. Subtract four, subtract four. X is equal to a negative four. Sorry for those of you that are following along. But there you go, x equals a negative four. And my point though that I wanted to bring it to is like x cannot equal a negative four, it cannot equal a two, and it cannot equal a negative three. Like this answer is not related to this one, right? Because we just purely focused on what the what was in the denominator. It just ended up being the exact same, but I didn't want students to make that connection thinking that, oh, they're, that's gonna give you the same answer. It's not, okay? Or at least not all the time. So, um, so therefore you can see that is going to be my domain. So make sure when you're not only understanding discontinuities, but remember anything that makes your denominator zero, little denominators or big denominators. All right, now in the next mistake that I see students make all the time is just not simplifying. And I get it guys, rational expressions, that looks really bad. <laughs> rational expressions can be difficult, right? And especially when we're dealing with a lot of like factoring, it can sometimes kind of be very overwhelming. But the main thing is like simplifying makes your life easier. That's why we do simplifying. So it's really important that when you see a problem that looks very daunting, just try to break it up like chunk by chunk to simplify it to see actually like see how you can make this problem go by a little bit easier. Because I can tell you the more you can simplify at the beginning or even at the end of the problem, the easier that problem is going to be for you. So let's kind of look at a, just a kind of ger generic example that for a lot of students just would be like, oh, I don't know how to do this. Like it's just gonna become too much work. So you know what? I'm just not gonna do it. I'm gonna take the L, right? I mean, it happens all the time. I see students with like, you know, I'll just make a confusing problem or maybe it'll look a little bit confusing and they will immediately just kind of like give up and say, eh, you know what? I don't wanna do it. So I don't know how to do it, all right? So here's a basic, you know, here's an example that, it, it's not really that difficult. You know, you have to subtract them. Um, but a lot of students might look at this and be like, all right, I got to subtract two rational expressions. I got to get common denominators. So uh, that means I have to factor all of these. I have a trinomial, binomials. Um, this just looks like a lot. <laughs> and it is. So what I would recommend doing in this case is, you know, just kind of treat each one. Um, you know, the main thing you always want to do is try to factor everything. Now, immediately when I look at this, this one minus y squared, I always want to write my, I always want to write things in standard form. So I want to rewrite this as a negative y squared plus one. And then hopefully you recognize you can factor out a negative. So that's going to be a y squared minus one, right? So make sure everything's written in standard form. And then once it's written in standard form, then let's go ahead and factor this. So what I have here is if I can factor this, that's a difference of two squares. Um, actually, I'm just going to write that down below. So I'll have a negative one times a y minus one times a y plus one. All right, so before I'm trying to find any kind of common denominators, I'm just going to factor, factor, factor. Over here, um, I see quadratic trinomial. That can be factored into a product of two binomials. So what two numbers multiply to give you three, add to give you four? That's three and one. So it's a y plus three times a y plus one. All right, minus, um, here I can factor out a GCF, right, which is a 2y. So factor out the 2y. That's going to leave you with a, what, y minus one. 
And then over here, I can factor out the Y and that's going to leave me with a Y plus three. Okay, cool. Now what I, now what I want to be able to look at Y minus one, Y plus three. Okay. Yeah. Now what I want to be able to look at is see like, all right, what can I simplify in these? And here I noticed that the Y plus threes divide out, right? These terms are separated by multiplication and over here, my two Y's are my Y's separate. So guess what? Now let's go ahead and distribute this and eh, let's not do that yet. Let's just go ahead and rewrite this. Now my new expression, I have a negative one times a Y minus one all over Y plus three minus a two times a Y minus one all over a Y plus three. Guys, if you're subtracting two rational expressions and the denominators are the same, you just have to apply the operations to the numerator and keep the same denominator. This problem really wasn't that bad. Like we don't have to do common denominators multiplying by things on both sides. Like, no, you just need to apply distributive property in the numerator and the denominator, right? And then put it everything over your common denominator, which in this case is a Y plus three. All right, so let's see what we get here. So that's gonna be a negative Y plus one. And this would be a negative two Y plus two. Make sure you distribute that to both terms. Um, now I can combine my like terms, combine my constants and combine those. And let's see, that's going to give me now a negative three Y um, plus three divided by a Y plus three. And can't really simplify. I mean, you could factor out a three in the numerator if you really wanted to, but you know, or maybe like a negative three, um, that's just going to be a Y minus one all over a Y plus three. But yeah. Okay. That was what I had there. And there you go. That is going to be how you do that simplified answer. Now again, obviously if this was like the same in here, then you could simplify that a little bit further. But again, like the main thing is like, we always look to simplify first to make your life easier. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, those are some of the key mistakes that students make in the next video. I'm going to go over some tips that you can use to when dealing with rational expressions. I hope you enjoy.